The over under for Michigan State football is set at a smooth five and a half wins. It's low. Do we like the over and how much of a guarantee will it be? And then we are joined by Kent Peterson of Casual Big Ten. He lends his insight on what he thinks about the Spartans. And then we each give our three best bets for the rest of the Big Ten. Let's go. You are locked on Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to today's show of Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white, three days a week here in July, and then, hey, August is going to be here before we know it. We're already, it feels like halfway done with summer. We're less than nine weeks away from kickoff. So yeah, when August rolls around, back to five days a week here on Locked on Spartans. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this here YouTube channel or podcast any way you are digesting this show Cannot thank you guys enough. And hey, hope you had a lovely 4th of July as well. Speaking of, you know, 4th of July, just how great this country is. One of the things that makes this country absolutely beautiful. Well, depends what state you live in. Is that you can do some sports gambling. That's right. And hey, if you're in the lovely state of Michigan, it's it's all it's all systems go, baby. Uh, fire away those bets. That is going to be the thesis of our show. And if you're not a big gambling person, well, I I think we could all wrap our heads around the over-unders set for teams around the country. And Michigan State, right now, going into the season, is five and a half wins per fan duel. Really quick, if you have no idea what that means, that means Vegas wants you to pick, hey, Michigan State, are they going to win over five and a half games? Are they going to win under five and a half games? So it's just really... Vegas's prediction of where Michigan State's season will be. Now, it's not a perfect formula. We will get into this at the end of this segment of how accurate it was last year for teams, not just in East Lansing, but around the Big Ten as well. But man, as of late in the last two years, the over-under hasn't really been close to the end result of Michigan State's season. Last year, I believe the over-under was set at seven and a half. And a lot of people jumped on that over. I mean, it just came off a peach bowl season. I mean, everyone was jumping on over seven and a half. And, well, we know what happened there. Two and a half games off. But let's talk about happier times. The 2021 season, the over-under, depending on where you got it at, they some had it as low as four and a half for our Michigan State Spartans going into that peach bowl winning season. And we all know what happened there. I mean, 10 wins by the end of the regular season. Yeah, not too shabby. So, where do we want to put our money for our Michigan State Spartans? I'll just spoil my pick right now. Yes, I am going to go with the over here. That's right. And no, it's not just because I'm a Michigan State slappy. I'm looking at everything through my dark green tinted glasses. Like, no, I, we're going to go through the thinking here really quick. Despite the fact that we, hey, just saw a five win season not too long ago. So here's where I'm at right now. The automatic wins. No, 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 no. I shouldn't say automatic wins. Leaning wins. How about that? We're going to protect myself from the jinx with that. Leaning wins. Central Michigan, Richmond. And let's just stop right there. Like, if they lose either of the Central Michigan or Richmond games, like, forget about betting. Forget about the season outlook. Like, I'm just going to quit everything and devote my life to fitness or learning a new language or growing a garden. For We're going to be far beyond caring about college football at that point. I'm going to lose my mind, but try to channel the energy. Anyway, who cares about my hypothetical spiral? Also, at Rutgers, I lean heavily to a win for Michigan State. And then at Indiana, I lean a win for Michigan State. Now, we talk about this in the next segment with our guy Kent here. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of my skis with the Indiana game, you know, because well, uh, what happened last year. But, hey, who's to – who's really going to sit around to hear about that Indiana. I think there's, there's a lot of, a lot of turbulence going on in Bloomington. Yes, they beat Michigan state, but outside of that game last year, I mean, there were really no signs of optimism for the Hoosiers last seasons. Now the losses, I have four wins right now. The losses I have five of, again, this is a very, very hard schedule. The Michigan game guys, I'm really sorry to say, Hey, look, crazy things happen in the Paul Bunyan game, but right now, 
as it stands, knowing what I do about each team, I'm going to lean with the Wolverines here. It makes me sick to say that, but hey, I'm in the business of trying to make money here. Ohio State, yeah, I'm going to have to see Michigan State at least keep one of these games within 35 points against the Buckeyes to even think that we could win that game. Penn State, I am a huge believer in Penn State. Talk a lot about them later on this show. The Washington game, I mean, guys, that is such a talented team coming to East Lansing. And then at Iowa as well. That's the five losses I have. So I have four wins, five losses. That I feel pretty good about before the season. That leaves us with three games. Nebraska at home. At Minnesota and home versus Maryland. I call these my toss-up games. You have to go two and one in these games to get that sixth win to hit the over. Nebraska, look, I think Matt Rule is going to do a fine job down in Lincoln. Just, I don't think this year. There's a lot of moving parts, and it is no secret in the conference, or heck, the whole nation, that Nebraska has some work to do uh, in a lot of facets of that program. So they are coming here to East Lansing. If they were going to Lincoln, would feel a little differently about that. Now, the Minnesota game. Minnesota is the one team in the conference I cannot just get a read on. They're going to have to revamp their offense. You know, no Mo Ibrahim, Tanner Morgan, after a 15-year career in Minneapolis, is out of there. Their, their defense will be decent. I do have pause, though, because that is a game on the road, and any road conference game uh, is, is a tough one. I mean, it just is, especially against a wild card like Minnesota. And speaking of wild cards, Maryland. Look, Mike Loxley has Maryland playing its best football that, I mean, that if that happened in my lifetime, maybe decades ago, they've been playing better, but Mike Loxley has the Terrapins going pretty good. And if you've ever heard me talk about Maryland, yeah, you know that, well, they're really up at the beginning of the season. However, I do like that game is at home. So if I had to pick two of those three games, I just named to go in Michigan state's favor, give me the home games in Maryland and Nebraska. That's going to put us at six wins. That's how I'm feeling it. Now, how accurate, accurate was Vegas last year when it came to over unders and the end results of all the teams. Now, just like we said last year, seven and a half was the over under Michigan state ended at five. I'm going to go down the list here of the preseason over unders. And then the end result, Illinois four and a half before the season, they ended up winning eight games. Indiana's was four games. They won. Well, four games, Iowa, seven and a half was the over under. They won seven regular season games. And again, these are all regular season games. None of the bowl games count here. Maryland, their over under was six. They won seven. Michigan, nine and a half was their projection. They won 12. Of course, Minnesota, seven and a half. They won eight. Nebraska, this one was far off. Their over under was seven and a half. I, I bet a lot on the over last year and they won. Four games, Northwestern, three and a half, they won. One of them, Ohio State, 11 was their win total. They won 11, Vegas nailed that. Penn State was eight and a half, they won 10 games. Rutgers, four wins, and sure enough, they got four wins. So they hit the post as well, and then Wisconsin, their over-under was nine. They only won six. So they either nailed it or were within a game seven Times They nailed it dead on with Rutgers with four, Indiana with four, and then Ohio State with 11. Now, their worst misses, Illinois, like for better, this actually really helped the Illini fans. Three and a half was their over under. I'm sorry, four and a half was their over under. They won eight games, so they were off by three and a half games. And for worse, well, Nebraska's was also off three and a half games last year as well because they won four and did not come close to that seven and a half mark. So, hey, more times than not, Vegas is very close. Again, either a game on or off. But as us state fans know in the last few years, it, it can jump around and confusing teams will can confuse even the best of them in Las Vegas. Now, speaking of our friends over at FanDuel, I need to talk to you about our friends at FanDuel because right now for this MLB season, go ahead and take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet in Bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you will land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. That's the best part about it. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from money line to over unders. Who's going to hit the first home run? The same game parlays, the crossover same game parlays. They have it all at FanDuel. And well, just like we've been talking about, the win totals as well for college football. It's all in an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. And when you win, you get 
paid instantly. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get up to $2,000 in bonus bets. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. It's FanDuel, official Major League partner of Major League Baseball. Folks, we are joined by the wonderful Kent Peterson. He does work for the whole conference at the Casual Big Ten Show. Kent, I was thrilled to have you on, man. How on earth have you been? We doing okay this summer? I'm doing fantastic. It's been it's been a great summer. I'm getting a little anxious waiting for football yeah. to start, though. It's been it seems like it's been a year since we've watched football on TV. I watched the XFL or not XFL. What's the the uh, USFL? Called? USFL. Yeah, USFL. Yeah, that's I right. Watched one yeah. of those games the other day, and it was not. I, I just didn't. I wasn't feeling it. I need college football back right now. Yeah. I'm excited though. Yeah, I, I've not stooped down to desperation of watching XFL or USFL. Like I've tried, but like after a quarter, it's like ah, this is a this is pretty close to like the Hall of Fame game that they always have like in the preseason, where like you're super excited to watch, and then after the second drive, you're like, this ain't yeah. scratching my itch. Uh, they're not no bad matter how desperate players. I am. Like they're pretty. No, they're fine. Players, they're fine. But it's yeah. just like you don't know any of their names. You you don't no. have like a team. Like, are you the atmosphere the is very stale. Like, yeah. give me like thirty thousand fans in Boone uh, watching Appalachian State against yeah. some other random team like Wagner or something like. Like, give me that. I'll watch that all four totally. quarters. But the the dead stadiums aren't doing it for me. Well, as this comes out, dude, uh, our Spartans at least. Well, my Spartans. You, sorry, <laughs> don't don't want to throw another team you're not a fan of on you. We're, we're less than nine weeks away from kickoff, so like it yeah. is crazy. We're already in the single digits for the week countdown here. Now, I just wrapped up the first segment, talking about Michigan State. They're over under a five and a half. Feeling a little optimistic. It is that time of the year where I'm starting to look at all the pretty things about Michigan State here. But we got you. That's right. Yeah. You are objective. You are down the middle. You cover the whole conference. What is your over under for five and a half? I think I do know your answer. Yes. Let's stir the pot, baby. Let's okay, Ken, so take us to church, man. Let's go. <laughs> I do want to preface it by saying that I think that Michigan State was, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on your show. I think it was uh, the hardest team to evaluate this offseason okay. as far as like what I think is going to happen. There is a new quarterback. You have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen with your defense. I just remember what was happening last year, and I don't know it, how much improvement there's going to be with that. Um, I love Jalen Berger. I, I like there's certain pieces that I like to the team. But um, as you said, objectively, I put out my I put out all the schedules, put out all the, um, you know, divisions, how everyone's going to finish. And I had uh, Michigan State at four and eight when everything was done. So that would put me at the under. And that, that um, would put you at the under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would put me yeah, that would put that at the under. Um, but all that being said, though, I do have a path that you guys can get to six or seven wins. And um, I'd like to talk about that, if that's all right. I would love to. As, yeah, let, let's just try to keep this as optimistic as possible after okay. hearing that four and eight is a projected record. Uh, because, man, it like, look, I, I, I could also see four and eight, too. Like, I, I'm not that far detached from reality. I know what MSU is going up against with all the question marks. And, oh, yeah. The schedule's not friendly, Kent, but please, I, enough of what I have to say. Like, what is the roadmap to getting to the guaranteed rate bowl in Jacksonville coming up this well, let, winter for us? Let's start with, uh, there's seven games I think we can like easily gloss over with wins and losses. And I, I think that I can make an argument that three and four is something that everyone can get around with these seven games. And that means okay. that you're winning automatically against Central Michigan, Richmond, Rutgers, and even Nebraska. I think that okay. those are wins that you could get, even though I just said three and then I listed four teams. Nebraska, so I, I guess I, I guess I'd put you at like four and four right there. Nebraska, I would say is a, the closest game of the ones that I think that you could win. Um, and those are the wins that I picked for you guys. Those are the four wins that I had. Um, but with Nebraska, new head coach, you have no idea what you're going to get out of quarterback. Uh, they have yeah. the like eleventh ranked defense last year. And I just don't see them making a big jump in year one. I think that okay. you guys can still win that game. So there's four wins right there that gets you almost to six. The problem is I have Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Iowa, and Washington. So even that that actually brings – I think I wrote this down wrong on my notes. So that would bring you to four and five out yeah. of the nine games. And of those five games that I have basically as like – 
I'm just chalking up as losses for you guys this year. I think the only one that just based on history is Michigan because there's been so many weird things that's happened with that game. They're extremely talented this year. Everybody knows this. I don't have to talk about Michigan, but you just look back at like, I don't know, the last like 10 years, there's the punt fumble game. There's the game that was in the rain, the Kenneth Walker game. And those are all years that you would go into that game and say, Michigan should be winning. And this is one of those years too, where you're saying Michigan should win, but what's going to really happen. But I still see that as a loss. So that puts you at four and five uh, with nine games, leaving three games left to get those last two wins that you need to get the over, right? Yep. Yep. Tricky games too. Yes. Tricky games as well. So with those three <laughs> games, you basically need to go two and one to hit the over. You have Indiana, Minnesota, and uh, Maryland. I had you guys losing all of them, and that's why okay. I had you at four and eight. But uh, some things that could happen with the Indiana game, I'm a little bit nervous because that's on the road. I don't yep. usually put a lot of confidence in uh, like what happened the previous year, but I do think that Indiana, because they only won four games last year, they look at Michigan State and say, we can go do this again, maybe. Do you think that there's anything to that? The power of belief. Uh, yeah. I, I do fall in love with the romanticism around that. Uh, unfortunately, yes. I, I think, because look, I'm looking at Indiana, and I think that's a walkover game. But for what reason, Ken? Like, we just we just saw them come back from 17 points at Spartan Stadium last year yeah. when Michigan State had everything to play for and going to a bowl game in Indiana. They were just playing to have nice highlights at their end of the season banquet. So I, I'm calling myself out here. Like, I think I am a little delusional just for chalking it up as an automatic win, but... Here you are, the not objective voice, you know, bringing some clarity in the room and telling us to maybe pump the brakes over there. And I don't know. It's just they, yeah. they have a they have a lot too. So their new quarterback, his name's Taven Jackson. He came in from Tennessee this year, and no one knows okay. what he's going to be at all because right. he hasn't played at all. Um, so you don't know what you're going to get from him. You got Cam Camper at wide receiver, and then the crazy yeah. part about Indiana is the mystery on defense because they brought in like yes. 23 guys from the portal. And five yeah. of them are supposed to start on defense. So it's going to be very interesting to see what you're going to get out of their defense. Um, so that's Indiana. Uh, Minnesota, I absolutely hate Minnesota. They I can't that. figure them out. I cannot figure them out. Yeah, I don't that's, like that's them the one all. team for me. Yeah. Okay, okay. I actually have them finishing last in the Big Ten West. Wow, okay. Which is pretty, it's a pretty hot take, and I've taken some flack on Twitter about it, but... I do have them beating you guys because it's at home for them. Um, sure. They have to win. They have to win somewhere. Um, <laughs> and then, like again, I don't know how much you want me to, how deep you want me to get into this, but uh, PJ PJ Fleck he brought in two guys from WMU, the Western Michigan connection, and one of yep. those guys is Sean Tyler, or I'm sorry, Sean Taylor. No, it's Tyler. I'm sorry, I had that right. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to be their main guy, and um, I think what they're thinking out of him is kind of looking at like what Jaden Reed was for you guys coming out of Western Michigan, and like being like a guy that can be like huge for them. So yeah, sure. it'll be interesting to see what they do. But I did mark that as a loss for you guys, and then again, like the defense, they were pretty good last year. So it's going to be up to you guys to be able to score on that defense, and then hold back their new quarterback, their new wide receiver, their new running back, and see what you guys can do on defense. So. What did, what did you mark that one as? <sighs> coin flip. I had a list of like coin flip games where, you know, yeah. it, it could go one way or another. And like, I kind of just balanced it out. Like, okay, well, we'll win like half of these and then win the other half. So, but yeah, like, so Nebraska for you is like the team you just can't figure out like that. That's Minnesota for me this year. But yeah, the third game that we still have to go to like, yeah, Maryland. And yeah. this is unfortunately another one of those coin toss games because look it's at spartan stadium it's gonna be maryland's first yeah. road game and they have an incredibly easy start to their season as well but then again like year after year we are proving that the theory of maryland is a pretty good team in september and by the time november rolls around well they kind of suck here we are this is a september game maryland hey you want to talk about the power of belief they're still going to believe in themselves mike loxley always has the boys cooking in the first five weeks of the season and that's a coin toss for me too, man. I mean, I just, I think I'm reluctant to call that an automatic about, win. Sorry about that. I think the no, interesting no, thing gonna... about that game is that it's the week after Washington too. Yes, so right, that game is right. going to have like a big, like it'll be impacted on what happens the week before. 
Yeah. Um, obviously Mar Maryland's pretty good. I couldn't get a pulse on them even watching them last year because I felt like they were good. And then when it came to like the big game, I'm thinking of like their Ohio state game last year, it was like really close at the end and then yep. they just blew it. And I was like, I just can't yep. get a read on this team. So I don't know. That's again, those three games, it's Minnesota, Indiana, uh, Maryland. If you can win two out of those, those three, I'm not, I almost said last three, they're not the last three, but two out of those right. three games. I think that you can comfortably bet the over, but um, I'm not comfortable doing that. I'm not comfortable saying you're going to go two and one in those three games. So I'm going to stick with where uh, the betting odds actually favor me, which is the under. I know that's true. Yeah. So let's go through the rest of the Big Ten right now, because, yeah. hey, you know, I'll mention it again. You do the whole conference, man. And I'm yeah. going to rattle off all the over-unders for the win totals. This is courtesy of our friends at FanDuel. So everyone get out your legal pad, your pen, your pencil, however you want to write this down. I'll go through this really fast. And then, hey, we're each going to share our best three best bets for the over-under for the rest of the conference. <gasps> Ohio State, 10 and a half. Michigan, 10 and a half. Penn State, 9 and a half. Wisconsin, 8 and a half. Iowa, 7 and a half. Maryland, 7 and a half. Minnesota, 7 and a half. Illinois, 6 and a half. Nebraska, 6 and a half. Michigan State, our Spartans. You already know this. 5 and a half. Purdue, 5 and a half. Indiana, 3 and a half. Rutgers, 3 and a half. And the Northwestern Wildcats take us home. Also, 3 and a half as well. Ken. So far, so good. I mean, well, we don't enjoy the prediction, but we love, you know, just all the reasoning behind it. So you're going to bat first here. What is one of your three best bets for the rest of the conference? Or was Michigan State one of your best bets? Did we already burn one of those up? No, I, I, I did three okay. other ones and I kind of ranked okay. them. So I did like a three unit, a two unit and a one unit pick. I hope that's OK. So I'll start with the my one. top yeah. one. Okay. Um, I'm absolutely in love this would be my three unit pick it's penn state over nine and a half i love that's, penn state. that's mine there we go yep perfect it's a, <laughs> it's, you look at their schedule and it's non-conference west virginia delaware umass that's it's automatic three right there yep they their toughest game is ohio state on the road and ohio state has they're going to be great still don't get me wrong yes but they do have question marks at quarterback um, I think personally, their defense might be a little bit broken after that Michigan game last year that they just got yeah. like, dismantled yeah. in the second half, especially. And then I, I've been talking about this guy for weeks now. His name's Drew Aller. He only had four touchdowns last year, zero interceptions, but he was the number one quarterback coming out of his class. Yep. And when I watched him play last year, it's not just about the rankings to me and what he did last year. It's about what I saw when he came on the field replacing Clifford. He just looks like that dude. He just yes. has that swagger. I love Drew Aller. Um, I'm betting that one. I'm going to probably put, it's like, I, I wrote this down just in case a unit for you is $100, but $300 will get you 217 on that bet at minus 138. I love that. Um, I'm probably going to do that. I already bet on Penn State to win the Big Ten East. Um, I think that they have a realistic chance of going 12 and 0 this year. I really like them. Their defense is supposed to be great as well. Yep. Um, so that's my three unit pick right there. Penn State over nine and a half. I, I don't think I've ever been more in lockstep with a guest that we've had on here. Cause not only was that my first one two over nine and a half, but you took all the words out of my mouth. Like I am a firm believer in Drew Aller. Like I almost hate how much I like him. Uh, and it, look short stints last year, but like, I felt like I was watching Penn state, whatever he was in the field. And it's like, Oh yeah, that's going to be a top 10 pick one day. I, I, I know what I'm looking at right now. Like he's all about that. And Oh yeah. When he hands the ball off to either Katron or Singleton, like, Good God, those guys are incredible. And then they have the offensive tackle that came back, even though he could have been a top 20 pick in the NFL. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Uh, it's, it's very good. We'll just put it at that. But it's also, too, with the schedule. Like, the non-conference is a joke. But also, their crossover games. Okay, at Illinois, that's a winnable game, I would say. You yeah. know, Illinois, okay, Brett Bielma's got the boys cooking over there. But still, Penn State probably favored to win that game. They play Iowa, but at Happy Valley. And then they go to Northwestern. And I apologize to... Pat Fitzgerald, I, I don't have a lot of respect for that at all. And with nine and a half, you're still allotted two losses. Like that Michigan game is at home. That's a coin toss. So let's say they lose right. that. Okay. You could still take, you could still absorb a loss against Ohio State as well. 10 and two, that's a winning ticket. So yeah, that Penn State over nine and a half. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I love it. I, I, love <laughs> I know. It. I, I do. I do. So um, there we go. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if we're going to match up any of these other ones. 
Yeah. Um, so did you want me to do my next one first or do you want yeah, to go, go for, for it. your next no, one? No, you're on a roll. Yeah. All right, cool. Go for it. All right. So my two unit pick right here actually just changed. Um, I forgot what you said just now when you read it, but I looked it up this morning and it moved up a game. Iowa okay. was originally at uh when you first seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah, I just went to the book right before this and they're at eight and a half now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so they just wow. moved that up. And I'm gonna say that even though they're at eight and a half. I actually kind of like that better because now I'm getting plus money there at plus 126 for okay. over eight and a half. I'm, I'm not as high on Iowa as I am on Penn State, but these are the two teams I've chosen to win each division. Um, and that's kind of why I took their overs because I'm pretty confident about them winning the division. But you obviously have Cade that's at Iowa now. I love, yep. if you don't know who Caleb Johnson is, he's great. He was a freshman last year, really good running back. And then everyone knows about their defense and everything that they did last year. They didn't lose a ton on their defense. Favorable, favorable schedule, in my opinion. Iowa State is one of their non-conference games, and they have, like, no one playing for them because of the yeah. uh, gambling stuff that's going on. Western Michigan, Utah State. And then uh, I think that the only, like, guaranteed loss they have is at Penn State, who I just talked about. But okay. I love that the value right here, um, $200 to win two fifty two at plus – 126. I'm taking uh, Iowa over eight and a half, even seven and a half. I had it written down already, but then even eight and a half, I was like, I'm fine with that too. Cause I think they can win 10. So there we go. Hey, uh, they just have to find a way to move the ball, but like I it literally yeah. can't get any worse than last year. And they were still like an objectively average team last year, even with, you know, no offense at all the entire season. Right. My next one is we're going to go to the basement here. We're going to go to the, one of the three and a half teams and we're going to, mm. unfortunately, I'm sorry to say Scarlet Knights, we're going to bet the under on three and a half here. It, it brings me no joy to do this. And look, Hey, the start of the season, not too bad in the first five weeks. Okay. They host Northwestern. Great. Okay. They host temple. Fine. They host Virginia tech. Maybe even win that game, then you go to Michigan. That's not great. And then Wagner at home. Let's say you win three of those five games I just named. Find me the win here uh, in the next six games here. Or, I'm sorry, seven games here at Wisconsin. Home against our Michigan State Spartans. And then you got to go to Indiana. You're playing against Ohio State, to Iowa, to Penn State. And to end the season, this could be the pure litmus test of the, hey, can Mike Loxley get the boys cooking in November? Because they host Maryland to end the season. Mm -hmm. I could very well see it. Being three, what would that be? Three and eight. Look at that Spartan math right there. Three and eight going into that last week against Maryland. But I just, I'm sorry. I'm not a believer. As much as I believe in Drew Aller at Penn State, it's the opposite with Gavin Wimsat at Rutgers. The guy's at like a 42% completion percentage, and, and it looks even worse than that. I, I just I, I don't have faith in Rutgers, so I'm going under three and a half for that. I'm, I'm sorry, Scarlet Knight Nation. No, I don't think I don't think you need to apologize because yeah, I mean I have them they at know. Yeah, I think they know too. I had them winning two games. So um, I have okay. them going winless yeah. in the con I don't think they can win a conference game this year. I really don't. It's it, it's not looking good for Greg Schiano and the boys. It's not yeah. their it's their not. roster is really depleted and they're just not good. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a tough season yeah. for them. I mean, and then they have like you know they're in the East. They got to play Michigan. Even like Michigan State's gonna be tough for them. Indiana's gonna be tough for them. I know. Um, and then I'll you got the other too. teams yeah. in the East. Yeah, they're not gonna have a good year. <sighs> it's tough. Well, take us home with the one unit bet, and all these are gonna cash. By the way, like I just oh, want yeah. everyone know that these are automatic hits. Uh, no, no <laughs> question about it. Yeah, just take a look at my gambling record last year on Twitter. It's I'm a hundred percent right now. Just Look don't, just don't go that. check it. Just take my word for it. Um, <laughs> my one unit pick right here is going to be, I already talked about them, so I don't have to go in depth. It's uh, Minnesota. I think oh, I think Minnesota okay. getting eight wins this year is going to be tough for them. I, I'm not sold on them yet. I am growing on them a little bit. I've talked to a few Minnesota guys now, but I have them winning three to five games. I already talked about how they're, I think, the worst team in the West Division even. Um, if you go through their schedule, five extremely likely losses, Michigan, Ohio state, Iowa, North Carolina. Um, and then I yeah. think I originally had Wisconsin in there as well. They could easily lose to Illinois and Nebraska, I think even, and then their toss up games are, uh, to me, Purdue, Michigan state and Northwestern. And I think that even Purdue and Michigan state could beat them. And it's going to be, I think they're going to struggle. They don't have Mo Ibrahim anymore. They right. don't have uh they probably thankfully don't have Tanner Morgan anymore. 
Uh, but I don't know. Everyone on Twitter is telling me that I don't know enough about their defense, and that's absolutely true. I'm literally called casual Big Ten. <laughs> I'm not going to go digging deep on your, you know, edge rusher. You got me. Team. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So, but I just, I as as much as I, I talked so highly of Mo last year. He was one of my favorite backs, and then immediately had everyone from a uh, gopher nation over there turning on me when I picked them to win three games this year. So I think that, I think that eight's going to be tough for them to get to it's minus minus one sixty four. Um, okay. but I would, I would take the under on that. Hey, that pays, you know what, that that's spendable money when that cashes. Yeah. My last one, uh, over 10 and a half for Michigan. Look, they returned everyone. It would be a complete an utter failure and a collapse and embarrassment if they weren't able to get to 11 wins. They own Ohio State. They play them at home. How could they lose? Now, do I actually believe this, or am I trying to run a reverse jinx out there? I, I know exactly what you're doing. It's probably, oh, come on. No, it's a combination of both, uh, really. If, if I got to watch these guys go to Indy again, I'm going to be paid for it. So this is going to be my 75-unit whale missile nuclear uh, play of the show here over 10 and a half wins for Michigan. So there you have it. Those are the best bets. Go ahead and just go ahead and make yourself some money at FanDuel, everyone. But hey, also check out Kent Peterson, Casual Big Ten. Where can the fine folks find you, my man? Yeah, it's at Casual Big Ten on Twitter. That's where I do most of my dirty work. Uh, I have a podcast and then I um, just started the YouTube channel probably about a month ago. So I'm just getting that up and running. Um, But yeah, it's been really fun, man. Started it last August and just love talking about uh, football and especially actually I'm more of a basketball guy, but I love talking okay. about both of them um, and at a casual level. It's much different than your show. You're very professional. So if you oh, want very like, buttoned up. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> With the fireball bottle behind me. Uh, usually there's a cardboard cutout of myself behind. Me. Yeah, we we keep it tight here on Lockdown Spartans. That's right, I baby. <laughs> love that cutout, by the way, I was showing them uh, nice. I was watching some of your stuff and they were like, why is it holding a baby? <laughs> I don't know. I just found a baby on the sidewalk that day. I was like, yeah, sure. Come in this cardboard cutout, kid. Let's yeah. I hope he's doing okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder what I was doing. Thank you so much so, for having me, though. I appreciate it, man. No, thank you, man. This is awesome. Appreciate your time, your insight. And hey, everyone, appreciate you listening. Go enjoy the rest of your week. Love you all. Go green.